Well, the results of the structural foam test pots uh, are here. They all cured absolutely fine within 24 hours. And um, we've just broken those out of the uh, cases just to see what they're like. Absolutely rock solid. Sounds like a hockey puck. This is why we do the testing because uh, this interestingly shows that obviously they need to be backfilled, which is obviously um, apparent, especially because you saw me in the video sort of winding it round because I didn't cut the tube on the end, so we had a very small trail. So it either needs a very large trail and probably be held at the very bottom and obviously back field so that there's no air pockets or air gaps because you can clearly see there are some gaps in our test versions but that's the whole idea of testing just so that we can perfect the process so that it's perfect um, so yeah these are absolutely fine so we're going to be dealing with a company um, who's going to be testing these we're going to be doing some compression test, shear test and um, tension tests um, these were just quick sort of deployment testers when we were testing the actual foam there, were, there wasn't a huge amount of thought that had gone into the versions of testing but since then we know that we've been speaking to people on the forums what they want to see um, so we're going to be replicating an OEM box section for the rear subframe we've already started uh, taking one of our um, old subframe panels that we've taken from a car we've already sectioned that up opened it out and seen how the inside is held and exactly the threaded receiver to see the thickness of the panels that the threaded receiver is spot welded to and then the outer skin to try and replicate that and the volumetric size so that we're going to try and we're probably going to try and replicate four we think but more is going to come on that later um, we're also gonna, probably going to try um, a deployment into a wax cavity as well, one that's been freshly waxed to see if that has any effect on it and then obviously we're also going to we're going to weld to we're going to weld penetrate onto one of the box cavities after it's got our foam foam's probably the wrong word, resin, let's call it resin, that's better um, to see what effect it has to it, does it burn it up, I very much doubt it looking at it but we need to know, we'll see what the localised heat does to it um, yeah, and that's the other thing to notice as well that, that in the video you probably see what height I poured these into, and they've not expanded at all, not not by any measurable amount, maybe by one or two percent, but certainly nothing to the eye. These are exactly the same amount that I poured in. Um, so yeah, so foam is probably the wrong word. Structural resin is probably a little bit better, but anyway. They're here, they set, they're fine. So we're going to do, um, we've got another one to use up. So like I say, we are going to do some proper testing, some, some build, some replica boxes of the, of the internal structures. Which, just to give you a very brief intro into the next video, this is the right rear section. You'll be familiar with this T section if you've done any strengthening or watched our videos or other people's videos. We're just going to deploy another one, and um, rather than just waste it foam, we're just going to we're going to fill a beaker, plastic jar, a couple of wheel bolts that have just been welded, do some uh, some plates. Just going to oppose those, um, let them set, and then just got something else to tension test as well. So we're set up now for another uh, another test. We got our foam in the uh, in the bath, about sixty degree ish. Uh, so, like I said in the video, we're gonna we're gonna just play about and just put a couple of uh, bolts into this other foam. We're gonna rather than doing three little testers, again we're gonna do some proper ones where we uh, we're building some boxes to replicate the volume of the floor panel. Anyway, we're gonna fill this uh, this beaker jar up. So I've just drilled a, drilled a hole and sort of roughly threaded the uh, M12 wheel bolt into it to try and make a seal-ish so that the, um, not much comes out. So I think that's going to go in after we've got some in the bottom though because otherwise I don't think I've got any chance of getting any behind that 
to sort of encapsulate the um, this bolt. So we're going to put some foam in first, then thread this bolt in. I don't know. Get get a bit of a protrusion, and then if if there's enough foam to get a fair amount in that beaker, then the idea is that we're going to have one poking out the bottom, one roughly above the top, and the foam probably somewhere about my right thumb, about this high. Both threads exposed, and then we've got something a bit stronger to do a tension test on, rather than like a riv nut like I tried in the last ones. Right, so there it is. Just like that, installed. That's how much protrusion we're getting, probably under gravity I would have thought, maybe a little bit of pressure, so whether this is going to work I do not know. You probably see I'm threading that through, spinning around. It's probably contacting the yeah, I can feel it contacting now. And we can confirm that by the fact that we've got quite a lot of spread. So the wash is definitely encapsulated. So I'm gonna clean that off before obviously it tries to set. We've got quite a long working time with these anyway because they're a 24 hour period total cure. So before we're finished, I'll get that off with brake cleaner just so it doesn't set or cause anything on the thread. So you see what we're trying to achieve here just as a little experiment. Now we're going to fill it up and then pop the last one in. So I'm trying to backfill this. You can see I've got almost a flow, which is hopefully going to stop create bubbles, but looking at the red depth gauge, I'm about halfway through.
probably just gone three quarters. Coming up to, uh, there we go, full. That's about it, I'd say. So we've got a fair amount. I don't know what that is in volume. Well, it's about 400, 420 mil. So hopefully that's surrounded underneath. Now we're going to see if we can get this in here in a reasonable fashion without getting too messy. Right, that's gone down quite some way and it's not touched the other bolt head yet. So it's probably as far as I want that. And then, then uh, I'm just going to have to get messy. I might have set that bolt a little bit too low, so I'm just trying to spread it out around the sides. Probably got about 15, 18 mil poking out, so we should be able to get a nut or the test equipment on there. So yeah, we're just going to suspend this now, so there's no weight on either of the bolts, and um, and then report back once it's cured. So we're about an hour and a half in now, uh, 24 hour cure period, as uh, as we know. Um, but already we've got an exothermic reaction and the resin is very, very stiff, almost almost solid already. I can't really crush that beaker anymore with my hand pressure. We tested this with a digital thermos, digital temperature gauge 10 minutes after and it was about 22 degrees. Um, and now we're getting readings of about 40, about 40 degrees C in the centre and it is quite hot to the touch as well.